So sometimes you take the public opinion, the wisdom of the crowd, and then you do the opposite. Not because you like making trouble, just, well, okay, some of you like making trouble, but there's more to it than that. If you watch enough videos about gold and silver, you start to get a feeling for community sentiment. Positive, negative, time to buy, time to sell. But since the lion's share of that content comes from people who are heavily focused on silver, it's harder to say what that sentiment represents. Now, right now though, it's clearly negative. I see lots of how low can silver go videos. And I suppose some of that bleeds into gold as well. There just isn't a lot of love in the moment. And I think that that tells us that people are worried about the wrong things. So let's try to fix that. Before we get back to it, if you're looking for precious metals, hit up SD Bullion. New customers even get gold and silver for spot. That's sdbullion.com slash new. So let's start with silver since that's where most of the hurt feelings are coming from. It's no secret that I don't talk silver up. I've given those reasons in the past. I've given them at length, but I'm not going to go into it here. I just haven't seen any realistic reasons why I thought that silver would break out over the last few years. And we can just leave it at that. The evidence just wasn't there. Now, I know, I know silver is manipulated. We're going to get those comments. But if you know that the silver market is systematically suppressed, why would you expect it to ever break out? So to the sentiment, though, that's happening right now, where people are, I don't know, concerned about the price of silver going down. Well, normally I would say worrying about the price of silver on a non-rainy day just doesn't make much sense. The reason I'm not real excited about silver, it has to do with logistics. Most of the retail silver options come with high premiums. That's just the reality of a product at a lower price point. But here's the deal. Silver's current performance doesn't throw me. It doesn't surprise me because I've never positioned either metal as a cash multiplier. So let's switch to gold since that's what I talk about here. Gold was $1,500 an ounce when I started this channel just a few years ago. At that point, it was up about $200 from the year prior. So I'm talking about 2020, the year prior being 2019. So for context, gold is up 30% since I started this channel, more than 50% from the year prior to that, the year that I was using as a base level when I started to reference the price of gold. Now, even with those gains, you've never heard me recommend anyone rush out and buy metals to take advantage of some kind of big run, some kind of big gain. There are no guarantees. And like I said, I just don't recommend buying metals as a cash multiplier. I see them as savings. Now that's important and it has a lot to do with the current sentiment that I was talking about. If I was looking for a quick in, quick out asset class, I'd be talking about crypto or the market, something else though. And my success rate would probably be about 50-50. If you want big gains, you just have to take risk. Now I've done a lot better than that, but I'm playing with an advantage here. The markets have been hot. Now, as a savings model, though, what I'm interested in is just simply adding to my positions. I'm less interested in counting my gains in terms of some kind of return on investment. So why would I mention that if I was just talking about 30% gains and about 50% gains? Well, if I'm doing things right, I'm accumulating when an asset is boring and that keeps my costs down. It gives me the best chance for these slow and steady gains. I'm not looking for huge gains. I'm just looking for gains. Now, if I'm accumulating when the asset is exciting, when the prices are higher, there's at least a moderate chance that I run the risk of that asset dropping in value. It's just the reality. If I'm doing it long enough, though, that averages out. And I know from looking at any historical chart that both metals have increased over time. So let's back this up with some actual context so people know I'm not just making these figures up. Ten years ago, the price of gold was $1,240. Today, the price of gold is $2,030. Now go back 20 years. 20 years ago, the price of gold was $410. Now, somebody in the crowd is going to say, now do Apple or some other growth stock. And once again, I'm going to have to point out that as a savings model, we're comparing gold to cash and to possible savings yields, not to some kind of growth stock. Now, you can compare the performance of a physical metal to a growth stock if you want, if that's the story you're trying to tell. But that's not a comparison that I make. OK, so let's switch back to silver. With silver, there are going to be more distractions. But for context, again, 10 years ago, the price of silver was $20. And yeah, that's not a lot different than where it's at today at $22, but let's go back 20 years ago. Now, 20 years ago, the price of silver was $6.35 an ounce. 
So if we only looked over the past 10 years, well, silver hasn't beaten savings yields, especially if you consider the premiums involved in buying that physical silver to begin with. But I'm going to use that bleak picture to make a point for both metals. Now, you shouldn't be buying a metal at a specific point in time with an expectation to sell X years later. You don't buy silver to hold for two years to make some kind of expected gain. And if anyone is telling you otherwise, well, you should be a little bit suspicious. So I think you buy metals for three good reasons, maybe three and a half. There's probably more, but these are mine. The first is going to be simply to stay ahead of inflation. Now, I'm going to jump back to gold since that's what I know the performance of better. I see people comment that gold doesn't stay ahead of inflation. Well, I started this channel at the front end of a huge inflationary swell. Inflation rate for 2020 was 1.4%. 2021, it was 7%. 2022, 65 And 2023, it was about 3.5%. I think it was 3.4. Gold is well ahead of that. Now, can you go back to July of 2022 and say gold didn't stay ahead of inflation that month? Well, of course you can. You can tell any story you want if you control the time frame. So let's look at gold's appreciation over the past 20 years. I'm not going to pull up an inflation calculator because I feel like I'll get it wrong. But if we were to look at gold's price in January of 2004, we'd have $410. You adjust that for inflation, it'd be $679 today. That part's not in question. The national average for high yield savings accounts, though, is 0.47%. Now we can do better than that today, but this is a new occurrence. CD rates at 4 and 5%. That isn't something that was happening 20 years ago. So the 10-year compounding yield on $410 in an account earning a half a percent is right around $20 over that time frame. So we'd be looking at $430 that we'd have in a savings account. And just to be fair, let's add another $20 because the CD rates lately have gone up. So $450 versus $2,030 that we now have with an ounce of gold. So we're ahead and that is not up for question. Over those 20 years, I've made investments in several different asset classes. I've saved some cash, I've saved some gold, and I've saved a little bit of silver. And I've never confused one asset class with another. I've never thought, why isn't my gold keeping pace with my Apple stock? And in terms of price of the metals, in terms of sentiment for those metals, well, I've typically purchased more when prices fell. So I almost have a reverse idea of when it's a good time to buy. So if it seems like gold is underperforming, well, I would have been happier to buy it at the time because it was savings and not an investment. I think I said three reasons or three and a half reasons. The second is that I don't spend my gold. I consider it savings, but I don't liquidate it if I need a furnace repair, if I want a new car. There's enough friction in a sale that I'll only use it for something big. Now, I'm not going to dive into that idea any further right now. I assume most of us get it. Now, the other half of that is that to a large extent, I buy gold with money that I would otherwise waste. Gold that gives the brain that endorphin hit that a new purchase does. The same hit that you would get from winning at work, winning a game. It's that retail therapy idea. And you can swap retail widgets with gold. You get that same hit, that same lift. And I'm not even going to give that as its own bullet. That's why I say it's a half. I pair it with not wanting to spend my gold on small things because overall, this is just a better savings model, at least to me. So the third reason is that gold and silver have this uncorrelated potential where the market could dump, the U.S. dollar could slump, and gold and silver could actually get a corresponding spike in value. If I'm rhyming, I would say gold and silver would jump. Now, there's no guarantee here, but you can find charts showing this has happened six out of the past eight recessions. That's where I think most of the confusion comes in as well because we can see the day-to-day -day effects of gold and silver running counter to the Dixie. So when the U.S. dollar is strong, gold and silver prices slump a little bit. When the dollar dumps, gold and silver jump. Now, it's really easy to exaggerate that case, and I think that's where these calls for the moonshots come from. My guess is that most people calling for moonshot and metals prices either don't understand the conditions required for that kind of jump, or they don't know how to explain it. And I'm not talking about all, but most. And for me, this is the least tangible reason that I'm in on gold or silver. It's at the bottom of my list. Now, I don't think that this is some kind of imaginary condition that something like that would happen, but I'm realistic about the amount of a spike like that, how much it would actually gain. And I also realize that that whole condition is unlikely. So put all of that together, and I would say we have a straightforward rationale for holding metals. It doesn't really change on a downtrend. 
It's not fear-based. The world doesn't need some kind of catastrophe for gold or even silver to work. And we also don't need a moonshot moment for gold or silver to make sense, at least not if we're being realistic. So this stuff is not a lottery ticket and a short-term drop in price is not going to change my sentiment. If anything, it just makes me more interested in buying. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm excited about silver at the moment, but now with premiums coming down and retail demand slowing, if that's true, I'm more likely to play the contrarian and actually pick some up. But with gold, we're definitely not seeing that downtrend. I think we're actually seeing relatively high prices so to me, the overall sentiment, that negative sentiment that we're seeing in the metal space right now, feels like it's upside down. So let's call it good there. Let us know what you're up to. Are you buying gold, buying silver, selling? Let us know. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.